What's it like to play opposite Dan Stevens playing a robot? I talked to I'm Your Man star, Maren Eggert. I did a stunt. <laughs> I had to fall down the stairs and Dan would catch me with one hand like being a robot. He would be able to catch me with just one hand. I did it so badly it was cut out though. So he was meant to catch you. I hope he did catch you. Right? Yeah, he did catch me. Everything worked out well, but I just, I, I mean, I think you could sense my being frightened in it. So yeah, it did work. Also in this episode, I speak to critic Terry White to see if I'm your man pushes her buttons. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. I'm going to get that gun of mine and I'm going to change you from a rooster to a hen with one shot. Some people call me a freak. I hate that word. I don't believe in it. Better yet, I don't believe in labels. You know, I think you're the only girl in the world that can stand on a stage with a spotlight in her eye and still see a diamond inside a man's pocket. Because I'm up at five every morning working my ass off. Does someone want to just tell me to my face you're never going to give me the scores I deserve? Hello, I'm your host, Anna Smith, and welcome to this episode in partnership with German Films. In today's show, we're examining the motherboard of I'm Your Man, a high-tech take on screwball comedy from German director Maria Schroeder. Hello, Alma. Ich bin Tom. Set in Berlin, I'm Your Man stars Maren Eggert as Alma, an academic who's taking part in a trial of humanoid robots to see if they could make realistic life partners. Muss zugeben, sie haben wirklich Geschmack. Alma's ideal match has been created for her by scientists. Enter handsome Dan Stevens as Thomas. Guten Morgen, Alma. An AI charmer. Das ist etwas, wovon 93% der deutschen Frauen träumen. Dann kommst du vielleicht selber drauf, zu welcher Gruppe ich gehöre. Who speaks fluent German with a sexy English accent. Ich weiß nicht, ob es Ihnen auffällt, aber Sie behandeln Tom wie eine Maschine. Woran liegt das Ihrer Meinung nach, dass er eine Maschine ist? Wenn du dich öffnen würdest, wärst du glücklicher. Ich brenne dich zurück in die Fabrik! Critic and author Terry White, who spent many years as the Empire Magazine editor-in-chief, joins me now to unpack the film. Terry, welcome to Girls on Film. Hello, how are you, Anna? Thank you for having me. I'm very well, and I'm delighted that we finally got you on the show. It's great to have you here. Um, now, your life's been quite interesting recently. Before we get onto the film, tell me where you're at at the moment, because you're leaving Empire, correct? I am, yes. Yeah. So uh, we're recording this at the beginning of August, and I've got about four weeks four weeks left in the, the big chair. Wow. What's the master plan after that? Are you allowed to reveal? Um, <laughs> Well, a bit of everything, really. So, probably actually spending time with my uh, my son. Um, uh, it's quite hard, it turns out, to have a baby and edit Empire at the same time. I have heard rumours of such things. Yes. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> tricky. But um, yeah, I've got. Um, I'm working on my second book, which is a novel, and there's going to be a TV adaptation of my memoir. So I'm going to be working on that. Oh, congrats! That's amazing. Yeah. So those two things initially as well as trying to raise a, uh, a half-decent human being. <laughs> that sounds like more than enough. <laughs> so good luck with that. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on to talk about I'm Your Man, which I'm a big fan of. And I hear you also enjoyed this film. My first question to you is quite a tricky one, maybe, but I wanted to say, what genre would you put this in? And are you a fan of that genre, of that hybrid of genres? Well, yeah, it's interesting, right? Because this this film does does a lot and tackles a lot and on first glimpse you could be tempted to call it sci-fi which I absolutely wouldn't I have to just say that from from the get-go and kind of it's tackling of AI you think is this going to kind of go dystopian you know the, the robots are, are out to destroy us but for me it's actually in some respects an old-fashioned and I mean that in the the best sense of the word an old-fashioned romantic comedy it riffs on you know screwball comedies it riffs on old-fashioned rom-coms it, it, it does have to do a bit of riff on sci-fi but that really isn't actually it's kind of the robot thing is is obviously an integral part of the story but isn't really what what the film deals with and I think you can see lots of inspirations in there or at least films that it, it can be likened to if people want a bit of a I suppose a roadmap for what they can be expecting with that's Tony Erdman, Ex Machina but also I could see glimpses of Little Joe in there, um, Black Mirror, some of the, the the kind of stuff it grapples with, the 
the questions about humanity, um, about individuality, about how we're programmed as people, all of these things feel very Black Mirror. If we drill down into the numbers, you have got a solid popularity arc here. No one is this happy. A two-year-old with a fucking balloon isn't this happy. Singularity is when computers learn to outsmart man like women did years ago. You are so adorable. We're genuinely empathetic as a species. We don't actually really want to kill each other. Gotcha. What I loved about the film actually was that it is hard to categorise in some respects and, and dips into all of these things um, and, and kind of plays with them all at the same time. It does juggle a lot of weighty themes, but with a light touch. And I'm always so impressed mm. when films do that. And it's interesting you mentioned Black Mirror. I hadn't thought of that one, but I, I totally get that. Um, I mean, I thought a lot of very male-centred films like Blade Runner and Her and even going back to the 80s, Weird Science um, sprung to mind watching this. But of course, those mm. are all about the supposedly possibly ideal female um, being created for a male. So obviously, this yes. is one of the reasons we want to speak about this on Girls on Film. This is a woman who is having a robot created to please her. Um, tell me what was refreshing about that for you and what in particular you found interesting about Alma grappling with this concept? You see, initially I was a little bit annoyed by some of how Alma was drawn because you have this workaholic, this woman who's alone. You get the sense very much by choice, but who arguably, you know, channels her energies and her focus into her career, um, maybe so that she doesn't have to tackle some of that broader broader stuff and that's something we've seen done a lot and that kind of kind of ground my gears a little bit but then you realize actually that it's it's tearing all of that stuff apart I think Alma is a brilliant character and I have to say Marin Egger is her performance she's got so much charm and it's interesting what you're saying is you normally see the gaze in the opposite way and she's so charming and um, frustrating and you know people often say about female characters flawed which I always find incredibly reductive because newsflash we are complex human beings people just like men um, but I loved the fact that she's irritating sometimes and you're frustrated with her when you view this film but I mean the performance is so naturalistic and so grounded but I found kind of her, the way she, her character opens up and as she discovers more about herself through this relationship and through this robot, you kind of grow to love her more. And there's probably an iteration of this film which is much more, you know, as he becomes more human, arguably so does she, and, and, but it, it kind of resists a lot of that for me and it allows her to be pretty unlikable in, in places. There are scenes that are quite awkward. There's a, a, a scene, I won't call it a sex scene because they actually end up not having sex, but there's a scene where she's the kind of aggressor in this and is kind of quite mean to him, but you... You completely believe in her as a character. You completely empathise with her and you love her for all of that, as well as her brilliant wit and her charm. Um, I absolutely love this woman. Alle sind begeistert von dir. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, du nicht. Können wir das jetzt alles mal für den Nachmittag vergessen? Wer du bist, wer ich bin. Er macht uns glücklich. Und was kann schon schlecht daran sein, glücklich zu sein? Doch sind nicht gerade die unerfüllte Sehnsucht, die Fantasie und das ewige Streben nach Glück die Quelle dessen, was uns zu Menschen macht? We're talking to Maren in this episode later, so I'm looking forward to hearing about how she prepared for that role. But I do agree that there, I, I relish the fact that she doesn't always make the choices that would be perceived as ideal or that I might have made or that I wish that I would make um, mm. like all of us she's flawed and that scene you're talking about she's drunk maybe she's mm. making bad decisions that happens you know and that is really yeah. refreshing to see and of course she won the, the the Berlin's first gender neutral acting award for this um, at the sort of virtual Berlin festival which I thought was much deserved 
Let's talk a little bit about Dan Stevens' performance. Are you a fan of Dan Stevens in general? I am. I, I think he's incredible. I think he's actually quite underrated, to be honest. But this, I think, is one of his absolute finest performances because he he looks the part. Let's get that straight. As soon as you meet him, you can understand why Dan Stevens has been cast as this perfect or perfect in her, her eyes man. But, you know, even the fact, I love the fact that he talks with this kind of uh, British accent and it's the fact where British accent, but he's speaking in German and, and they make a reference to that, which is, oh, because that's, she likes people who are a little bit foreign. And there's, there's touches of genius like that with his character. But I think he is, you you absolutely fall in love with him as this, as this film continues and you can see why she's so drawn to him. And it, is, it does sound a cliche to say he is constantly, increasingly humanised as the film goes on, but he really is. And that is down to Dan Stevens. His comic timing is impeccable. What he does with his face, his physicality, because from the beginning he's meant to look and move like a robot. And he does, he's very stiff, everything's very deliberate in this performance but he he knows when to kind of hold it a bit he knows when to kind of almost do something a little bit slapstick I think this is a really hard performance to judge and I feel like he absolutely nails it I agree I think he's not only charming but also very very funny and there was some little throwbacks to old movies where robots, you know, that's sort of when they put the quizzical smile and uh-huh. their head to one side. There were tiny little nods to that. But at the same time, so much humanity that you understood how she could be drawn in and start actually relating to him like he's a human being. And, you know, this raises a lot of questions, um, more than we've got time to go into now. But mm. I'm curious um, to ask you, Terry, that without spoilers, did the film persuade you that a love bot or whatever you want to call it Mm. could actually be a good thing I think I'd say yes because you go on on Alma's journey um with her and no spoilers but I think it would it's it's not spoiler to say that there isn't a picture perfect tied up with a bow resolution to this film And I really respect that. But what it kind of shows you is, on a fundamental level, you may have an idea in your head about what the perfect man and actually the perfect life looks like. And what he helps her realise is there's really no such thing and that when you get it, maybe it's not what you wanted. And he helps her dig into issues both big and small. There's a a thing about uh, about the female orgasm, which is one of my favourite scenes in the film and you can tell she'd never verbalized it she says it's like dissolving and I was like oh my god what what a remarkable way to talk about it and to a to hear kind of the female orgasm being talked about at all on film by a character so explicitly but you, you could tell it was the first time any man had probably ever asked her that and I think he so brilliantly challenges what she thinks she wants what she thinks she needs without it descending really into a being single is shit in a very crass terms but you don't want it to be you don't want this film's message to be being single is is terrible and this robot she falls in love with makes her realize that because what it actually I think reveals quite intelligently is that actually people dismiss being single too quickly people attach all of their own kind of issues to it and that actually people reduce it a lot they dismiss single people's kind of choices a lot and this what this film isn't is kind of a almost a love letter to relationships while it's also really romantic in some respects and and the complexities of that and how it refuses to kind of go down any of those roads I I really love that but what I think fundamentally it's about the right person, this is what I took anyway, and I am a bit of an old softie, but that the right person can make you ask the right questions, not just of yourself, but of your life. And that's really what happens in this film. And it's it's also about yourself and it's about self-love because, of course, he's been created, you know, using algorithms based on her brain scans and her answers to questions. And that's really interesting. And I think that backs up what you're saying about being single is yes. say shit it's about self-awareness yes um, and I love that you also picked out that sex scene because I think her performance in that is incredible mm. and mm. 
it is something we see so rarely on film. It's normally shown from the male perspective still. Mm. Um, how important do you think it is to have a female director like Maria Schroeder behind the camera at that point? I mean, for me, this this film could only have been directed by a woman. And, um, you know, we talk a lot about what the female gaze looks like, and I think there's lots of different iterations of the female gaze. But to approach it in that way, and with the kind of, you know, there's, it's, it's all about almost like an exploration of herself, of what sex means to her, of what relationships mean to her, and you're completely inside that female experience and that female perspective and I think I, I really think that takes a female director who can really understand the nuances of that and I think what you're saying is really smart I read somebody I read somebody talking about it that it's essentially a mirror and it is really because her own needs and desires are being reflected back at her and in that sense she, he's basically there to, to mirror back to her everything she thinks she wants, she needs, she desires in life. And so it actually isn't about another person, it's about herself, bringing it all back to herself. And I think that's a very, in this respect, a very female story to tell. Tom, yeah? Magst du es nicht, wenn man dir Komplimente macht? Glaubst du an Gott? Das ist eine Frage, die man nicht in dieser Umgebung diskutieren sollte. Hast du ein Lieblingsgedicht? Ich mag vor allem Rilke. Herbsttag zum Beispiel. Sechste und siebte Zeile. Dränge sie zur Vollendung hin und jage die letzte Süße in den schweren Wein. Vorletzter Buchstabe des Gedichtes. E. Was ist der Sinn des Lebens? Die Welt in einen besseren Ort verwandeln. 3587 mal 982 durch 731. 4818, Sandra Hüller has a small role in this. Are you a fan of hers? I mean, you mentioned Tony Edmund earlier. I am, yes. And I have to say, like, it, it's a small cast in this film, but they are all absolutely kind of perfectly, perfectly chosen. I mean, think about, I was thinking about this, Dan Stevens. How would Dan Stevens be your first choice? for this film i was trying to imagine that because when i remember we um did a story on this film in empire and i became a bit fascinated by it i was like i couldn't get my head quite around this german film with dan stevens set in berlin and, and i was like I, this is kind of really fascinating to me and i think there are some really smart casting choices made in this film I think they all work, actually, and that, and you mm. don't always see that. I have to say there's only one thing wrong with this film, Terry, and that there's, there's no wham on the soundtrack. I know. I mean, with a title like that, are you, like, it's a absolute crying shame. What a missed opportunity. I know. I was really hoping for a bit of, baby, I'm your man. <laughs> um, but never mind. You know, to be fair, the title in German might not work with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, that otherwise, absolutely love this film. I'm glad you agree. Um, I wanted to wrap up, actually, just talking a little bit about German actresses today because I feel like there's quite a few, I mean, bubbling under. I mean, I've always loved Franca Patente, Diane Kruger. Mm. But um, are you a fan of Helena Zengel from System Crime? and then news of the world she's just 13 but she's doing incredible work i know can you imagine being able to put in performances like that as a as a teenager that doesn't even kind of bear thinking about um but yeah i mean what an incredible kind of crop of actresses and i have to say Marin egger is fairly new to me and i just was absolutely blown away but, i mean this is kind of one of the performances for me of the year so far. We're in August, there's still a, a bit of a way to go, but I was utterly captivated and compelled by her and I've got a feeling that right up until the year's close, she's going to be one of the performances that I remember the most. Well, I'm excited to introduce her shortly. And before that, I wanted to mention a couple of other German actresses that we've been speaking about recently, which is Mala Emde from And Tomorrow, The Entire World. Terrific film. Mm. Um, and also, I really enjoyed Nina Hoss in My Little Sister, um, which people will have the opportunity to see soon. So lots going on in that. But um, meantime, Terry, you've mentioned your book. Is there anything else we should know about? Where can people find you on Twitter, for example? I am on Twitter, normally shouting about politics or films at terry underscore white and i'm on instagram at terry l white excellent and uh, do come back on girls on film it's been such a joy to speak to you lovely to see you thank you so much anna 
that was Terry White. Next up, I'm joined by I'm Your Man star, Maren Egert, to talk about playing Alma, working with director Maria Schreder, and tapping into the happiness algorithm. Well, Maren, welcome to Girls on Film. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm a big fan of this film, so it's just lovely to sit on Zoom and see your face, having watched this film twice and loved it. Um, Tell me, what attracted you to the script of I'm Your Man? Well, you know, already in the script, you could sense this mixture of um, comedy and then deep thoughts in the end or more. And um, I was very attracted to that because you don't find it very often. And the dialogues were very um, smart and fast. And I sensed a bit of a scribble in it, which I always wanted to do. So, um, yeah, I loved it. I'm glad you said screwball because we thought that as well. There's a definite screwball flavour to this film. Um, And of course, wonderful female director. How was it working with Maria Schreder? Yeah, wonderful. Of course, she's a very talented um, director and I loved her as an actress before. I never met her as a director, but uh, it was totally good. Um, She is she has a good sense of humor and she's smart and um, she knows her she knows film doing you can sense it in every pore she's really well she knows what she's doing you mm-hmm. you, you can feel that everywhere and um, she's done a lot of films as an actress and she's one of those actresses or or directors who can also explain what she's doing like not only do it but also explain what she's doing and why she's doing she sounds like a good communicator which is which is important right that's right yeah she talks a lot and a lot of good things and she's a good writer also I mean she wrote the script herself with um, her partner um, Jan and um, yeah she just knows what she wants and she tries to do what she wants so that's good. It's a strong vision isn't it I feel like you, you can feel that watching the film. Do you think it's important that this film in particular was directed by a woman? Well I don't know you mean I'm the, every I know many directors male or female and they all are very strong characters um, obviously <laughs> And I don't know, I mean, this change of perspective, like making the man the the object in this um, is very female inside, maybe. Um, In some, I think, yeah, in some situations, I I had the feeling it's it's good to have a to have a woman on behind the camera. (laughs) Yeah. Because it is a bit of a flip of the usual story. Um, As we've just been discussing with Terry White, so often it's a female fantasy love bot. And this time it's a male. So it does does seem kind of useful to have a woman making that story. Mm, That's right. You know, it's not a bad idea. What? Making a girl. Actually making a girl. This is Wyatt and Gary. I give her one digits memory glance. Something's about to change their world. Something out of this world. She's alive! Alive! What would you little maniacs like to do first? It's all in the name of science. Weird science. If you want to be a party animal, you have to learn to live in the jungle. Not us. Not here. No way. She is turning their lives. Trust me for once, will you? What is going on? Gary, I don't know. I don't know where. Their minds. <laughs> and their house. Upside down. It's seriously affecting your sex life. <laughs> did you develop your character, Alma, with Maria? Did, did she change a lot as you discussed it with her? And what were the important aspects of her personality that you wanted to put across? Um, we had a lot of time before shooting because she sent me the script and we did the um, the um, the casting very much uh, um, uh, very early, like we had, a, I think, a year or something before shooting or maybe three quarters of a year. Um, so we met a lot and, and discussed the script and discussed um, the character. Um, I think a lot of it is also uh, um, already in the script. So what I had to do is like 
try to say the lines and make it believable. And I was al almost halfway to, to the character. So the dialogues are tricky. And yeah, on the way getting there to say them as if they were mine, that was al already a huge effort. Uh, we did a lot of tries and um, yeah, had, had huge discussions also, of course. Well, let's talk a bit about Dan Stevens because obviously we're a British podcast and we know Dan from Downton Abbey and he's so great in this. He um, is, <laughs> isn't he? I mean, he's doing so well, so perfectly. Well, A, how did you feel when he was cast and B, what was he like to work with? I, I, I got the information that he was on the roll like two weeks before we would shoot or three weeks before. And I was very pleased because he is uh, British <laughs> because I love England. I travel a lot there and um, I love the accent. Uh, it's like when he's speaking German, he has this nice British accent, which I like. Um I was thrilled because he's known for for um, a, co a comedy like um, Night at the Museum or... Um, oh, of course, yes. Not the Night at the Museum. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I thought, uh, yeah, because he has this swiftness in his, in his person, like he's very fast and clever and... Um, funny and I, I I thought it would work out immediately and um, yeah and we met and he's as friendly as I suppose he would be <laughs> very polite of course being a Brit a Brit <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at least that's what we Germans think about. I love that. I wish that were true. I mean, some Brits are polite. <laughs> um, no, it was a pleasure working, of course. He's, um, yeah, certainly charming and nice. What kind of preparation did you do together? Because the film really rests on the chemistry between the two of you in many ways, doesn't it? Yeah, well, we found it very quickly that it would be best to make our characters as different as possible and uh, to to you know make a setting where everyone watching would immediately think uh, how are these two going to get together <laughs> and um, yeah and then for the screwball scenes I named them screwball scenes in the, in the apartment in Amos apartment um, with the quick dialogues it was also important to find uh, a rhythm together like with the bodies but also with the thinking <laughs> uh, to make the dialogues work and to make it funny of course so yeah we focus on that very much well you did it beautifully i was laughing a lot ich habe ordnung geschaffen damit du deine sachen besser findest Es hat nun alles System. Zum Beispiel... Kein Problem. Ich kann in elf Minuten alles wieder auf den Ausgangszustand zurücksetzen. Were there any particularly challenging scenes? I did a stunt. <laughs> I had to fall down the stairs and Dan would catch me with one hand like being a robot he would be able to catch me with just one hand and I was hanging these uh, stri like uh, metallic st strips catching me I did it so badly it was cut out though <laughs> but that was challenging for me uh, because yeah well falling downstairs uh, did with you your hurt back. yourself no I didn't no okay. but it was just you might, I mean this situation was just letting go and falling backwards was, wasn't easy for me but yeah I didn't do well so he so. was meant to catch you I hope he did catch you right? yeah he did catch me everything worked out well but I just I, I mean I think you could sense my um, my being frightened in it so yeah it did work I'm impressed you even tried your own stunts. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that's I did. <laughs> amazing. Um, uh, yeah, and then of course, yeah, challenging. Yeah, a lot of uh, it was all challenging. Actually, it was a challenging role. Mm. Well, the sex scene is very revealing. I thought you were amazing in that scene because a lot of it rests on the expressions on your face, um, and it's very rare we see these kind of scenes in films from a woman's perspective. What kind of conversations did you have with Maria before filming that? Well, Maria had the the fantasy that it would be like 
somehow the best sex ever she um, ever had with this uh, android and th she thought it would be um interesting to show that is that it is really real good sex in the, i mean and also in an emotional way but um just before shooting we talked again and we thought it would be more interesting to show the the sensation that Alma is letting her herself go into I, that she's doing it is the is the whole sensation. I mean that she's uh, willing to have sex with an android. That's that's the uh, interesting thing in the first place. I think about this and um, while shooting as being Alma, I thought how wonderful it is to leave these boundaries of your of your thinking and just let go and just try out this try this out and and yeah and let yourself be surprised how wonderful it it can be and uh, yeah i think that is the real sensation of this sex scene yeah it's brilliant that all, all those looks kind of flickering across your face i thought was was so revealing and on girls on film we think it's so important to show this kind of scene so thank you um, now, there is a suggestion that your character Alma deludes herself about what she really finds attractive in a man, so she's kind of kidding herself. Do you think that's common in, in women today? And have you had any women tell you that they relate to that? In a way, yes, and in a way, no. I think in the beginning she's angry because, <laughs> you know, Tom's algorithm is not at the point uh, there. He's not that good in the beginning because he says stupid um, uh, dating uh, sentences like, in your eyes are like um, lakes and I want to dive into them. And she's annoyed by that, I think. And she's annoyed by being mirrored um, and knowing at the same time that that it's people behind that who have information about her and trying to make up something for her and she she feels too you know too smart to be taken by it uh, somehow and um and then also i think no one likes to be mirrored and to be shown all of the time this is what you like and this is what you are so that's very difficult i can understand that um yeah, but then I think it's true because um, when it comes to the emotional scenes, like with her ex-partner, Julian, um, she is very happy to have Tom at her side. And um, I was amazed that she is able to, yeah, to take that from Tom. He's trying to help her out of these situations. And I know many women, including myself, I think, who, who would then push away um, the 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 other one and um, not not uh, be able to to appreciate that and to take it and that she takes it and enjoys it is really nice I think and um, I think that is a point where you can speak of that she deludes herself because she I don't think she would have known that before that reaction. Well, she goes on such a journey and she is such a wonderfully complex sort of self-analytical character which leads me to the big question do you think that this is a feminist film yeah of course I mean I don't think it's a feminist film in a political way but where's that political way I don't know I think it's important to do this change of perspective to show that also the male character can be an object and uh, and I, I enjoyed very much that Dan had would have the the humor to uh, to stand this situation where he is where he's the object and um, Alma is um, not really treating him well and we saw that a lot of times with women in films and I'm really convinced that this has to stop and um, for example in German films somebody found out that almost all of the time women would talk about men and had no other issues and no other <laughs> things to talk about and that's really I mean I love talk about men uh, don't get me wrong but no it, it can't be that way anymore we we have to change things there so yeah and that way maybe yeah I, th I, sh I should say it's a feminist film yeah yeah because it bucks those trends doesn't it was ist das Traurigste, was du dir vorstellen kannst? Allein zu sterben? Wow. 
Wollen wir tanzen? Rumba. Ich würde Ihnen empfehlen, die Gelegenheit zu nutzen, Dr. Felser. Sie werden erstaunt sein. Do you think that often films sort of talk about happiness and satisfaction differently when it comes to men and women? Like there are different expectations of what is supposed to make us happy. Well, I love I love the scene in the end very much where she meets the the other guy who was trying uh, out, uh, who was testing a, an android, and he's really happy with his partner who's younger and um, beautiful and uh, lovely with him and he just says well I enjoy it why don't you <laughs> so yeah I mean I don't think everyone is like that but I I have the impression that it is easier for for men to when everything's fine and you're happy to why worry, why worry about the rest so <laughs> I think that's a more a woman thing to to think about the source of the happiness and whether that is ethically a, a good thing or good for your soul or yeah yeah like as as Alma you know not to give spoilers but as she kind of analyzes at the end you know those pros and cons of this situation um and before I let you go I'm interested also to know what do you, do you think this film has something to say about parenthood and reproduction again without spoilers but I feel like there's something interesting in there yeah of course I mean Reproduction is a th is a topic for Alma because she lost a child and is an, at an age where where she can't have uh, a child anymore, and uh, she's not really happy about that. And I may, maybe in in terms of life is it will end, and it's it's not always everything possible. Mm -hmm. So. Um, in comparison to androids who won't grow older. And <laughs> of course, that is a, a point. And then um, then we have the character of Julian, who is trying in a very conventional way to, to, to start a family and who left Alma for a younger woman, slightly younger, but still younger. And she is expecting a baby and he has... Uh, they have rented this house and trying to do everything right now <laughs> and that is uh, a contrast to Alma I think to Alma's life who is um, sat he, she's sat satisfied with her life yeah. as it is of course she has worries like it hurts that she doesn't have a family or but she, still she's happy I think and she's working and she has a life and nothing's really missing yeah it's, mm. in many ways it's a celebration of the single life which I think is we don't see enough of in film um you mentioned um that German films have maybe had an issue with statistics like probably all films with women talking about men too much but which mm. of um, your past roles are you particularly proud of as a woman Yeah, I thought about that, and um, I did. I do a lot of theater also, and I did Medea, um, uh, uh, but in a version of Christa Wolf, who is a German um, writer, and she made a per change of perspective there also, bringing out more of the aspects of Medea being uh, being a fugitive. And in this version, everyone says she she killed her children, but she but she didn't, and. Christa Wolf was very much annoyed about um, Medea doing all these things because she was jealous. Uh, yeah, because Jason, uh, Jason has uh, a younger woman, <laughs> and um, yeah, I love that play very much because um, Medea is a very strong character. And what are you up to next? Can you tell us? Yeah, I'm preparing a, a movie. I'm shooting in 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 winter in Germany and France, and I'll be a conductor in that one. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I have conducting lessons via Zoom, and it's not easy via Zoom, though. But, no, I um, bet it's not. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting, yeah. I love it very much, yeah. So, and that's a French-German co-production, and we're going to Brittany. I love that. That sounds like a great skill and another interesting female role that just doesn't revolve around her love life, right? <laughs> yeah, because no, because conductors, female conductors, that's also a, a great. Um, there's not many of them. I mean, there's more now, but 
um, used to be a male uh, domain. Oh, well, brilliant. Well, do come back on Girls on Film and tell us about that when you finish it. Um, Meanwhile, anything else you want to share with the listeners about I'm Your Man? Yeah, well, I just hope everyone enjoys the film as much as we did while making it. And um, yeah, I'm very proud that uh, it will be shown in, in England also. Oh, well, I, I've been raving about it and tell everyone to, to watch it. So I hope our listeners check it out and I'm sure they'll enjoy it too. Thank you so much, Rowan, for your time today and for joining Girls on Film. Thank you for having me. Wir können auch sprechen, oder? Tom kann auch sprechen. Tom ist ein freundlicher Roboter. Sag mal, hat er mich jetzt gerade verarscht? Ja. Tut mir leid, war einfach so naheliegend. That was Maren Eggert. You can watch I'm Your Man in UK cinemas from this Friday, 13th of August, 2021. That's it for today's Girls on Film. Girls on Film is an HLA production, brought to you by executive producer Hedda Archbold, audio producer and assistant producer Eliana J, assistant producer Heather Dempsey, and our partners for this episode, German Films. We'll be back soon. Meantime, we post daily film recommendations on our social media channels, so check those out for more female-focused film updates. Thanks for joining me, Anna Smith, along with our fabulous guests, Terry White and Maren Eggert. See you soon and stay safe, everyone. In this world, we're all so caught up in our own heads. It's easy to lose sight of what's real.